Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I got a message today from Chris over in the UK, and boy, I hope you're watching this because I wasted some brain cells on this one, about how to position a boring tool to get a very specific diameter on a conical angle. Now, you know, if you've looked through the library of videos I've posted, there is a video that shows how to do that, but it's conditional based on the fact that you can have a gauge ball in it or some other type of gauge and you know the f anyway if you've watched it you know what it's all about well this particular application is uh, it, I guess it's a face plate or an adapter plate to go on the nose cone of a very specific machine and it is the major diameter and the angle that are critical going into a very shallow pocket it doesn't matter if it's a through hole or a bottom pocket this particular uh, technique should work so I thought, no big deal, if you know the radius on your tool, or even use a dead sharp tool, but dead sharp tools never give the kind of finish we're looking for when we do things like this, but if you're using an insert tool, a carbide insert tool, chances are you know uh, the radius that's on the corner of that tool is very consistent, very precision. So I've got the mechanics on the board behind me, and Chris, you really lit me up on this one. So. There will be no practical machining demonstrations. I'm sorry for that, guys, but I'm going to show you the mechanics behind the linear shift on your cross slide in order for a radius tool to snap off a very specific dimension on a corner of a conical internal feature. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to step off the camera here for a second and zoom in so I can point at it and you can see it. Uh, now there are no numbers on here because this is very generic in its presentation. This right here is the corner of the bore. So naturally there will be a bore over here and in you go. So here's your part. This is the edge of your part. This is the diameter dimension that you want to hit. Now let's just say the radius on your tool, you know when you bore a straight hole what your reading is on your cross slide because you just bored a test piece and you've got your number everything is wonderful well if you take your same tool and you bump the nose of your part you now have two givens you have a starting point and you have a bore diameter but lo and behold the tool is not touching the part so what is that shift in order to get it to come across that hole? I think that's the question, and I certainly hope it is, because I spent some time on this. Well, most of the details that you need to know are here. What you need to shift is this little leg right here, because that will take the tangent point of your tool and put it on the same trajectory as the internal conical dimension or feature on the print. So how do you find that? It's actually not all that hard to find. If you look at all the characters I have drawn on here, and this is a G. Anybody that's going to zoom in or blow this up, this is a G. So in order to find the FE shift, the answer is up here in the corner. That's the answer right there. If you can take line segment CA and subtract line segment AJ, it will give you the shift that you're looking for, the little line segment FE. Let's get back here and zoom in on that. Now, how do I know this? Because this particular shift is exactly the same by construction if you take a parallel line and strike it down here. So if you can figure this triangle out, and you can figure this triangle out, well, CJ is exactly the same as FE, and that is your answer. So that is a very simple, not simple now that you can see it, but there is your mechanics behind finding the linear movement of your cross slide in order to intersect a given point on a conical feature boring inward. Sorry, I am not going to actually go out and cut this. 
This is very generic. I wanted to demonstrate and, and document the construction necessary to find that line segment. And Chris, I hope this helps. By all means, try it. Let me know if you like it. If you have an insert tool and you know that radius, you're golden. Sharp tool is the way to go, but it gives you a crap finish. So anyway, guys, a little bit of construction, a little bit of geometry for you. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.